<coughs> afternoon. Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome to this media conference with Gareth Southgate and Luke Shaw ahead of tomorrow's Euro 2024 qualifier between England and North Macedonia. We'll get right underway with Mark McCadden from Sky Sports News. Gareth, good afternoon. <coughs> Happy Father's Day. Thank you. From Malta to Manchester, you've got a bit of a selection dilemma. You've um, got your five Manchester City players back in contention. You've got Trent, man of the match, as a number 10. Eberichi Eze, Callum Wilson and Mark Gay all playing well. What's the mindset in terms of your team selection ahead of this one? Um, well, you're, you're right. It's always difficult picking a team because we've got some depth and... Uh, players who have all trained well so they're, they're all presenting well they're all available for the game um, as always we're looking at the opposition we're looking at the best way to try and win the game what what uh, attributes we need so uh, yeah n not an easy decision but um, we're, we're very clear in our heads where we need to head in terms of North Macedonia England have never beaten them at home mm. I know there's not been a lot of games what's your analysis shown about the way that they play and how difficult the match will be yeah, well, they should have won the other night against Ukraine, really. Um, so we know the quality of some of the individual players. Uh, they've got some players playing at big <coughs> European clubs. The, as a team, they function well. Um, they obviously knocked Italy out of the last World Cup, and they were, you know, they pushed Portugal close as well in those knockout games. So they have got pedigree. They they bring the game to you a bit more than perhaps we had the other night as well. Um, so it isn't just a case of rolling on from Friday, it's a step up, it's a step up in intensity and quality and we've got to be uh, right in our game to be able to win the match. There's been so much speculation in the build-up to this camp about a number of England players and moving around to different <coughs> clubs, but it seems to have stopped over the last two or three days. Did you speak to players and say, look, you don't want their club futures spoken about whilst they're on international duty and would your message be after the game on Monday, that those players that haven't played a lot over the course of this season, that they need to find minutes ahead of next summer, should they be involved with the squad? Yeah, I haven't felt the need to say anything. Um, I mean, the players are tapping each other up anyway on the quiet, so that's uh, <laughs> I can't do anything about that. But, um, they, um, you know, these things, what, what I have said is that these things run their course they happen in their own time you can't force it as a player you've got to accept that uh, don't get frustrated don't be asking all summer you, you don't need to be updated on every call that happens there's a lot of negotiation goes on and um, I remember as a player getting too wrapped up in every detail of that and uh, in the end there's only a, there's only a small amount that you can actually control so I think all of those ha things will happen later on in the summer and um the players, uh, I think the players understand that really and they know that the focus for the next 36 hours is this game, finishing the season well, making sure that we're sat on 12 points and we'll be in a very healthy position if we do that. Luke, who have you been tapping up then? <laughs> There's a few. <laughs> Mason Mount? Um, yeah, obviously he's not here, but um, no, I think... Uh, it's all just a bit of banter really um, I think obviously we have a joke and a laugh about it um, not too sure what goes on obviously behind the scenes it's you know to do with the club really but of course when we're here and we're always together um, yeah we have a joke about it but you know like I said I don't really know too much what's what's going on so you know that's just it really In terms of you personally you signed a, a four year contract in April so you're very settled has that enabled you to play your best football over the course of the back end of the season and this summer? Um, I'm not sure really. I think I've been settled there for, for quite a long time now. Um, I think, of course, this season the manager's definitely helped me. Um, I think he's taken me on to a new level. Um, he's pushing me every day and I think, you know, definitely that's what I need and what I want. Um, and yeah, I want to keep on, keep on improving, keep on getting better as I, you know, still think that I can um, and push myself to, to an even higher level. And, you know, with the, the people around me and the coaches that I have, um, I feel like I can do that. You played at left back against Malta. You played at centre half for Manchester United a number of times this season. Is that versatility something you feel 
gives Gareth an, an extra dimension as to why you should be in the squad and why <laughs> you should be in Germany should the team qualify? No, I don't know. I think my performances so far hopefully you know show that I, I deserve to be in you know in the setup around here but you know I think we spoke about it before anyway I think you know of course I'm a left back but if if I ever need to play centre back here I'm you know I'm more than happy to to do so um, I learned a lot you know in the time playing centre back in a new position you know learning different things and you know I really enjoy doing that but you know first and foremost I'm a left back and yeah, like I said, wherever any manager wants me to play, I'm, I'm happy to play. Hi, Gareth. Uh, you said it's tough naming uh, a team selection. The Man City players are, are coming back. Will we see some of them in the starting lineup tomorrow? Possible. It's possible. Um, there are obviously some very talented players and some important players for us. So um, it, it is difficult to name a team. There's no question about that. But as I said, we've looked at the opposition as well and um, ma making sure that we get the balance of our team right. Um, but it's uh, an important game for us and we want to play well. We've got a big crowd. It's a sellout. We're pleased to be bringing the team to the to Manchester, to the north. And um, I think it's important we do that. You know, it's the, the team are for all of the country to follow, not, not just the south. So, um, so we hope we can put on a, a display that uh, brings pride and uh, brings excitement. Just wondering, how have you found the reaction to Trent Alexander-Arnold playing in, in midfield this time opposed to when you played him there in 2021? No, it, well, he, he deserves, firstly, he, he played exceptionally well. So first thing is that he deserves all the uh, credit he's getting. Um, the rest <coughs> is, is noise. So, you know, it's, it, I, I don't really get too distracted by that I've been in this uh, role long enough not to not to bother about that and how has he reacted personally does it give him more of a direct route into that uh, England starting 11 well it's a it's another option and um, as I said the other day it's an exciting one you, you, we, we know um, the outstanding qualities that he has so um, uh, I thought he adapted really well to the role it is different to what he's been asked to do at his club to this point um, but as I said the, the, uh, after the game he was excited by that anyway when we talked about it and um, he, he delivered so uh, yeah uh, great credit to him Thank you and, and so Luke similar to club you are got the faith of the manager for the England setup. you're only left footed left back uh, in the squad how does that make you feel having the support of the manager like that? Um, yeah no it always helps obviously having the, the support of the manager um, but I think you know there's obviously a couple injuries out there especially Chile I think obviously he's been injured over the you know last sort of end end of the season so obviously he wasn't available but you know I feel like yeah it, um, it obviously helps a lot knowing that I've got the faith of the manager um, we speak a lot and you know I feel really good here whenever I'm here I'm happy I enjoy you know playing football and you know, of course, that that always helps. James, hi Gareth. Um, the last home game away from Wembley was at, at Molyneux last last year. When it, obviously it turned a little unpleasant at the end. Do you have any concerns with the crowd staying with the team tomorrow, or was that hungry game kind of a one-off given the result and the circumstances? Yeah, it's for us always to uh, to bring the crowd with us. So it's uh, the onus is on us to give the crowd something to be excited about and to play well. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm sure you know it's a, it's a great crowd up here anyway. Um, when we went to Leeds a few years ago, that was an exceptional atmosphere, and I'm sure Manchester will be will be the same. And and the fact that it's a sellout is exciting for us. It's exciting for the players. It adds an edge to the game. So, um, but of course, also our, our opponent will be lifted by that. You know, they'll want to put on a good display. So we've got to be ready for them. Um, but as I said, we want to play well. We want to entertain our supporters. And of course, we, we, we need to win the game. I remember at the time you, you talked about the difficulty of managing player loads at the end of that season. I just wondered if you've taken anything from that and doing anything differently this time a year on. Well, slightly different scenario. We had four games and um, the players this time that weren't involved in the cup finals managed the two week break and actually I think psychologically that's been really helpful um, the risk was physically 
could we get them back to the right level? And I think we've managed that um, ahead of the first game. So uh, I think they've actually enjoyed a short interlude in the, in the break. They now get another two, three weeks off and then back into pre-season and, and talking to them. You know, they love coming back together anyway. So um, in many respects, the off the field is, is socially really good. And uh, I think they enjoy that. They've got the chance now to, to get back to their families, but they're ready. They want they want to get this last game right, and um, they want to finish what's been a, a long season on a real high. Thank you. And just one to Luke, if I can. Um, Marcus Rashford spoke to us a few days ago just about the issue of player welfare and the, the, the <coughs> lack of recovery time between matches. You've obviously played with him at United, had a very long season. I just wondered what your view on that was about the, the, the amount of rest you've had during the season and, and the, the sort of physical toll on the players. Yeah, of course, it's it's very tough. Um, but I think for me, at the end of the day, it's our job. Um, and being here, of course, coming to England, we're extremely grateful to, to be picked. Um, and for us, like I said, it's our job. I think, you know, I'd much rather have, you know, a shorter summer this one and, and be in the Euros next next summer. So. For me, I have no problem with, you know, the games. Of course, it's tough, but, you know, we're all very fit, you know, individuals, teams. So, you know, we push ourselves to the max. But like I said, for me, these games, you know, are very important. So we know that we want to be in the Euros <clears throat> competition next summer. And, you know, these games mean, mean a lot and we need to be fit and ready to go. And, you know, especially tomorrow, it's a, it's a very tough game. It's, of course, the last game of you know, our season. So we have to get everything to, to get the three points. Thanks, James. Any further questions? Okay. We'll end this section there. Thanks for your time. Thank you.